นโมทัสสะปะกวะโทอะระหะโทสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนโมทัสสะปะกวะโทอะระหะโทสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนโมทัสสะปะกวะโทอะระหะโทสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะทิรวาระบทสมซีรีส์ธรรมทักษ์นัมเบอร์56 and condition consciousness อรามนะ and เชตตา and พาลิอรามนะ means objects เชิดามิน consciousness There are six kinds of external objects we cognize many objects of course but it falls into six categories the five physical objects Aramana are the visible form or visible matter, sound, smell, taste, and touch. They are materiality of physical objects, and the sixth object is. Dhamma object, also called mental object. A little tricky when you call it mental object, if you don't know what they are. These six objects interact with the six sensitivities. Which are eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind, under a proper set of conditions. Under the right conditions, these objects and sensitivity, corresponding sensitivity, interact. The third element, consciousness, also called dhamma of the present moment, arises instantaneously upon the meeting of the first two. When the object comes in contact with the sensitivity, a consciousness arises. And that consciousness is also called the m a of the present moment. When six sense objects strike, the six sensitivities corresponding consciousness arises. So there are six types of consciousness as well. So from that we know six sense objects are the cause or condition, and Six sense consciousness are the effect or result. Without this process, 
no consciousness can arise. We have to have that process for a consciousness to arise. Without it, there's none. When the visible object, or we can also call it a form, strikes eye sensitivity. Eye sensitivity is the retina in the eyeball. When the visible object strike the retina, seeing consciousness arises. Only then the consciousness arises. Similarly, the ear sensitivity, which is the eardrum, give rise to hearing consciousness when the sound hits the eardrum. When odor strike the nose sensitivity, smelling consciousness arises. When flavor strikes the tongue sensitivity, which are taste buds on your tongue, tasting consciousness arises. Touch consciousness or touching consciousness occurs when a tangible object strikes the body. The whole body is the body sensitivity except the end of the hair and the end of the fingernails or the toenails. That's why when you cut your nails, you don't say ouch. When you get your hair cut, you don't say ouch. Because there's no sensitivity. Let's call it nerves in the modern language. This touch sensation, touch sensations dwells in the earth, fire and wind element but not in the water element. Because from the Buddhist definition, a matter consists of four elements, earth, wind, fire, and water. But for touch sensations to occur, only needs earth, wind, and fire. That is what you can feel, hard and soft, hot and cold movement, vibration, water element, which is cohesion and dispersion, you cannot touch. That's why it only needs three elements for touch sensation. Those are the five physical. But when the Dhamma object or the mental object strike mind sensitivity, knowing or active consciousness arises. Here, what is mind sensitivity? It is explained in the Abhidharma. It is the Bhavinga. Bhavinga which is also known as passive consciousness or life continuum. The force that maintains existence. Bowinga. So Bowinga is the mind sensitivity, when the Dhamma object, or let's call it a thought,
strikes the mind sensitivity, then knowing consciousness, active consciousness, or thinking consciousness, whichever one you like, arises. These six consciousness are the Dhamma of the present moment. It's a different way of taking it. You call it consciousness, consciousness. Your mind understand in one way. But that consciousness is, what is it? It is the Dhamma of the present moment. That is what is happening at the present moment. So consciousness is also known as the ma of the present moment. These six objects are striking elements because they strike, they hit. What do they hit? They hit the six sensitivities. And these six sensibilities are called receiving element. They are in the receiving end. The objects are the striking or giving. And the six consciousness are called emerging elements. Now, we try to understand under the concept of element. First we call it object, sensitivity, consciousness. Now is objects are striking elements. Sensitivities are receiving elements. Consciousness are emerging elements. These words are important. Once you use the word elements, your mind doesn't go into a, a person, an individual, or a soul. But once you use the word consciousness, you are in a doubtful soul. So, what's are important as well? How to realign your thought process. Buddha said, all of, us, all of us have six sensitivities. And one of the six objects is constantly striking the respective sensitivity at every waking moment. Non-stop, except when you are asleep. These objects are striking, hitting, contacting. One of the six sensitivities. So it is uh, constantly in operation. Therefore, an active consciousness always arises. Because whenever there is a contact, Conscious on consciousness arises. And where does it arise? Instead of the passive consciousness. Passive, passive consciousness is Bawinga. But when that striking take place, when the contact take place, Bawinga ceased. And in its place it's replaced by this active consciousness or the sixth sense consciousness. That's how the mind operates. We are all Vipassana practitioner. So, right here, 
observed. You can observe, a yogi can observe, let's call it Vipassana observes. The moment when striking and receiving elements come in contact, you observe that moment. Of course, as soon as it's come in contact, what happened? Seeing or hearing or smelling, tasting, touching, or thinking happen. They strike, it happened instantaneously. And what is seeing? In full is, it means seeing consciousness. So, Vipassana is observing that process. Striking element, receiving element, and the emerging element, the consciousness. And if you are observing precisely, you are practicing Vipassana. The elders explain the process using a violin so that we can understand clearer the emerging element sound emerging element of a violin is a sound or consciousness in our practice arises when the bow, the bow of a violin, striking element, touches the strings of a violin, receiving element. So, let's see, when you touch the violin bow onto the strings and wrap, Sound arises. Same thing. Striking element, a form, strikes the receiving element, the eye, seeing consciousness arises. Like a violin producing the sound. Another example. It's a match. Match as a match sticks in a box. And when you strike the two, the flame arises. But there's no flame in the match stick, and there's no flame in the match box either. But when they strike, flame arises. Just like that. When the sound, striking element, hits the eardrum, receiving element, hearing consciousness arises. But the consciousness is not in the sound, the consciousness is not in the eardrum. But when the two strike, active hearing consciousness arises. Only then that consciousness arises. It replaces the bawinga, passive consciousness. Another word for sensitivity, okay, we call it Six sensitivities. Another word for sensitivity is door. D O O R, door. In Pali, it is dwara. Let's look at the door. A door is a place when a person enters or leaves. That's what door is, a place where a person 
enter or exits. Similarly, six sense doors are where consciousness arises and disappear. Consciousness arises at the eye door and disappear at the eye door. Just like a physical door in a house. And if one can observe this process at the door, consciousness arising and disappearing, arising and disappearing at the eye door or ear door or nose door, if you can observe it, if you are observing it, you are practicing vipassana, insight meditation. We all know there are different levels of insight. At the level of insights of arising and passing away, Udiya Bayanyana. One will see, okay, mentally see, see or know the appearance and disappearance of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and thinking. At that insight, you can really see these things happening arise and pass away, arise and pass away. When we say tasting, touching, it means tasting consciousness, touching consciousness in full. But in practice, we just simply say tasting, touching, thinking. When this insight matures, the process becomes quite sharp and clear. Before you know the beginning and the end, appearing and disappearing. But now, it's a whole unique experience, very distinct, without being polluted by anything. You see the arising, and without being polluted by anything, you see the disappearance at the mature stage of that insight. And at the insight of dissolution, the next level, Binganyana, arising becomes obscure. You don't see it or you see it vaguely, but disappearing becomes very, very evident and fast. You thought you saw something, but it's already disappearing. That kind. If one can observe these six consciousness at their respective doors, at the present moment, in other words, when and while it is happening, occurring, if you can observe that, you are accumulating a huge amount of wholesome vipassana karma. Vipassana kusala karma. In other words, wholesome karma produced by vipassana. That's what you are doing. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to try and do about it. You simply observed it. Automatically, this wholesome karma produced by Vipassana is accumulating. If one is not observing the moment of contact at the sixth sense door, repeated arising of the beautiful forms, pleasant sounds, good taste, 
and soft touch. will develop intense craving and wicked greed. All that is you are not observing. If you are not observing, all the goodies will develop intense craving on those and eventually leads you to a wicked greed. And also, not wanting to face <coughs> unpleasant objects, the desire of not wanting to face, not wanting to have unpleasant objects will develop aversion and anger, leading to the akusala karma, unwholesome karma. So it is just simply the observing or not observing, knowing or not knowing. One leads to the kusala karma and another leads to the akusala karma. And once it leads to the wicked greed and unwholesome karma, that one has lost their rare opportunity of being born as a human being because only the human have a direct access to practice this, a choice to practice this inside meditation. And not only that, one will be reborn in the inferior existence in the next life. First of all, you lost the opportunity, and then the next one is you are going downhill in the next life. If one cannot observe the moment of contact, with good and pleasant objects. Reflect. Let's say you can't observe or you don't have opportunity to observe or you are not able to observe the moment of contact for whatever reason. Reflect that one is experiencing these beautiful, nice, pleasant objects due to the past life wholesome karma. You have done a lot of wholesome actions in the past life and you are reaping the result. That's the reason you are encountering all these pleasant objects. Reflect that way if you miss observing at the moment of contact. One requires good karma to support the practice of liberation. We are practicing vipassana to liberate ourselves from all form of suffering. And to practice that, to be able to practice with ease and comfort without difficulty you need good karma that is coming from the past life actions. Similarly, one can reflect that facing unpleasant things and conditions and situations result from unwholesome karma actions from past lives and that is an obstacle on the path towards Nibbana. Remembering as such would be able to ease the unpleasant situation 
without developing reactive evil actions. Give you a little bit of cushion so that you don't fall flat on your face. But in short, just in one line, we can say like this. Bear right attitudes. Carry right attitudes. This right attitude in Pali is Yoni so manasikara. All of you have heard this. This Yoni so manasikara, right attitude, wise attention, is the proximate cause of the wholesome karma. Proximate cause, immediate cause of wholesome karma, kusala karma. Solid, attractive objects can sway one to do wicked greed, wicked greedily actions, and intense conflict can push one to do violence. In those situations, reflecting the wise attention or right attitude is not practical. You can reflect as much as you want, but you have no energy to push these back. Only a well-trained mind with vipassana or samatha, a jhana state, can resist powerful objects that can produce wicked greeds or hurt and harm, violence. Yogis who are tender in concentration and insight, they have another choice, another method, can change the object that gives wicked greed and violence to neutral thing, to a neutral object. For example, is like rising, falling movements, lifting, pushing movement, stretching, bending movements. Direct, redirect the attention to those neutral actions from those strong, powerful objects that swayed you. This diversion technique can temporarily stop the strong desire and powerful anger. One cannot avoid the object and consciousness because objects are always striking, consciousness always arising, so you can't avoid it. But one can streamline this process into a wholesome path, not unwholesome nature. So there are two methods. One is diversion for people who are not strong in concentration and insight. And another one is the vipassana, mindfulness, insight, meditation that can always give you, put you onto the right path. May all of you be able to understand the six objects that are constantly striking your six sense doors, 
that makes six types of consciousness arising at all time. And make sure those consciousness roll onto the path of wholesomeness and stop rolling into the path of unwholesome path as soon as possible. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much.